Hello everyone, my name is Pixelriffs, and welcome back to the Minecraft Survival Guide. I hope you're all having a good day. In today's episode, I figured we could continue looking at Minecraft's generated structures. We looked at a couple of them in yesterday's episode, where we looked at shipwrecks and drowned ruins. We also found an ocean temple, which we'll be back to later this week, so I figured why not go out in search of a few of the others. We know where a couple of pillager outposts are already, but I think we're going to skip over those and head towards something a little bit more exciting in terms of loot. So I'm going to head back towards the east so that we can head towards the desert that we found. I know the desert was fairly small and didn't have a great deal in terms of generated structures, but there was one over there, and I'm hoping that by looking for another desert in the same region, we can find another. On the way, there will be a couple of jungles we can stop off at, and hopefully we are going to track down both a jungle temple and a desert temple in this episode. And out here, about 1500 blocks to the east, we stumble upon our first jungle. It is close to midday, so we've got a little bit of time to look around before we have to sleep for the night. And within the jungle itself, there might be some in the bamboo groves as well, but I think within the main body of the jungle is where we're going to be looking for our jungle temple. Looking for a jungle temple from the ground, though, is probably not going to be the best idea, since the jungles are dense with foliage, there are pitfalls, there are melons, there's all kinds of stuff going on in a jungle. So we're going to climb up to the highest point in the jungle and take a look around from there, because if we can't see a jungle temple from the highest point around here, then there probably isn't one and we can keep looking further afield. This right here is the tallest tree I could find in our surroundings. Let's bump up our render distance a little bit, maybe turn the simulation distance down, but turn the render distance up to 24 chunks. Let's see if my computer starts chugging at this and maybe a little bit framesy here and there But we can take out the spyglass and take a look around the horizon We see a couple of pandas down there in the bamboo grove. We see a lot of bamboo and I'm not certain if we're going to see a jungle temple from here. The jungle continues off in this direction until it becomes a regular forest again over there, or is that a more of a sparse jungle? I think that might actually still be a sparse jungle biome over there. There's a lot more hills back where we came from, and there was a ruined nether portal down there in the river, but it didn't have a great deal worth writing home about. I don't see anything over this way as well, so we'll have to spread out in this jungle and comb the area. But what we're looking for is a temple made out of cobblestone and mossy cobblestone that's particularly potentially got a bit of loot inside for us. Well, let's get a decent look back at where we are in the jungle. I decided to take to the water and lo and behold, what do I find? But a mossy cobblestone structure peeking out from between the trees. Let's row on over. There's also a really nice stone shore area. There's a shipwreck behind us over there and it looks like we have an azalea on the shore over there as well that kind of indicates there's a lush cave in this area. So this looks like a fairly nice place. We might end up coming back here at some stage, but the main thing we need to do is check out this jungle temple. We'll raid the shipwreck afterwards, but the jungle temple takes priority. I am going to quickly see if I have enough iron in here, I do thankfully from our previous exploits, for a set of shears because we can take those into the jungle temple and they will help us diffuse some traps that are going to be in here because yes, the jungle temple is a mildly dangerous environment. The main thing you need to be worried about really is hostile mobs spawning inside of here, but if we can find the entrance which I think is actually on the other side around here there we go only just managed to get an entrance it is a little bit dark in here there aren't any naturally spawned light sources in here so we will need to watch our step a little bit now as we come down here you'll notice there are a couple of leaf blocks in here to our immediate right is a set of switches we'll deal with those in a second. First of all, we're going to go around the corner here, and you'll notice at the end of the corridor there, a dispenser waits to shoot arrows at us, cunningly disguised by a set of vines. There is some tripwire on the floor here, which we can simply break with shears to defuse the trap, and it breaks into string. It'll make a noise like a bowstring twanging, but no arrows will have hit the wall. Alternatively, if we want to see this trap in action, we can put the tripwire back and walk over it, and as you can see, an arrow shoots down the corridor, and since the direction of arrows is a little bit random, sometimes that will end up hitting you. But don't be too frightened by the sound of the tripwire, you 
can just break it like so, and you can even collect the tripwire hooks if you want to. Now let's move on around here. There is another tripwire laid down right in front of this chest, so you need to be a little bit wary of that. But in the meantime, you can break out some of the redstone that was used to lay the first trap for you. And if you want to, you can shear the vines off the dispenser and grab any arrows inside in case you need those. We could, of course, reach over the tripwire to open up this, and that's actually surprisingly good loot for a jungle temple chest. They don't always have that great stuff in it, but we got seven gold ingots. We've got an iron horse armor, an iron ingot, and a little bit of bamboo, which is always worth having in case you haven't found any bamboo out there in the jungle. A little bit more redstone dust behind here that's activated by the tripwire here, and we'll probably go into tripwires in future and how they can be used in redstone contraptions. But for now, this section of the temple doesn't have much else to look at. On the other side of our entrance, though, is this set of three levers that I mentioned earlier, and I'll show you how to solve this particular puzzle, which will open up a secret area in the temple which has some extra loot inside it. If you don't want to see the solution to that, look away now. First of all, we pull the lever on the left, then we pull the lever on the right, then we deactivate the lever on the right and deactivate the lever on the left. When you've done that, you can walk up the stairs over here and a secret compartment has opened up over here thanks to a combination of sticky pistons. You can't actually reach the chest without dropping down into this area, so we're going to do that. We're going to open this up and it will have another loot chest. Sometimes this can even contain diamonds. Right now all we've got is a little bit of gold and some bones, so nothing much to write home about here. The loot inside of these structures is not all that interesting at the best of times. However, if you are playing on peaceful mode so that you don't have hostile mobs spawning, it is one of the only ways that you can get hold of easy sticky pistons because this structure will contain three of them. We've also got a redstone repeater and a bit of redstone dust in here. Of course, you could find that nice and easily by exploring, but it is kind of nice to have the sticky pistons because getting hold of slime in a peaceful world is quite difficult. You can get it occasionally from pandas that sneeze slime balls out, and you can buy it from the wandering trader, but slime is a precious commodity on peaceful worlds, and honestly, just not having to craft three sticky pistons is kind of worth the price of admission alone. Sometimes you'll find that lever mechanism on the inside is on the left-hand side of the entrance instead of on the right-hand side, in which case you just reverse the order of the levers that we just flipped, and the puzzle will solve itself the same way. So that is the jungle temple conquered. <laughs> There's not much to it these days. They were an older structure that has not really changed since they were first added to the game. And so maybe we'll end up remodeling a jungle temple to have a few more interesting components to it. But for now, that is the jungle temple in its entirety. You can break it down for mossy cobblestone if you want a bunch of that. You can just tear the whole thing apart if you would like to. But that is how basically every jungle temple is solved. But I think this jungle temple is actually in a really nice location. It's got this kind of river valley going off into the jungle in that direction. We've got a nice lagoon that we head out to over here. I think maybe if we grab some obsidian, we could turn this into a location for a nether portal. And that way we'll come out in the jungle temple every time we want to visit this area and maybe work on some build projects if we choose to build in this jungle in future. So I'm going to stash the stuff we got from the jungle temple inside of my ender chest. We're going to row over to that shipwreck to see if there's anything over there, and then maybe I'll go back and grab some obsidian from that ruined nether portal or find a nearby lava lake, and we can create a nether portal here inside of the jungle temple. Let's see what we've got here in the shipwreck. It's actually <laughs> pretty easy to row up into that one. And this looks like the type of shipwreck that will have three separate chests in here. So we've got a couple of emeralds in there as well. Very nice. A couple of gold nuggets as well. And the final chest of a shipwreck that we didn't get to cover in yesterday's episode. This one down here just has food in it for the most part. It can also contain moss blocks and bits and pieces of paper. There's some coal in here, which is going to be quite useful. A couple of poisonous potatoes, but sometimes you'll find things like carrots and potatoes that you can plant in there which can be useful if you haven't found those if you don't want to wait to get a zombie kill to get a carrot or a potato like i did in this series now if we open this chest up we'll get another buried treasure map from in here so we might as well grab that also an empty map and a little bit more paper too but as we can see from this map the player marker in the bottom right hand corner is much smaller than usual which indicates that this map is actually quite far away from our current location i'm not sure exactly how far away and if you know please let me know in the comments because i did a bit of research before this but i could not find anything on the Minecraft wiki that tells you how far away your player has to be before your marker will show up that small on the map. So I'm fairly certain that's not random, I just don't know exactly how far we can expect to travel before we start to appear as a larger player marker, indicating that we're a little bit closer. But it does say that we need to go north 
and a little bit west. So let's see which direction that is. Oh, it's that way. Okay, good. We can continue in this direction then, and we'll come back to place the nether portal in that jungle temple. Well, I've rode to the other side of that little bay, and we are now looking a little bit larger on the map here, which seems to indicate that the treasure is going to be nearby. We've also returned to the desert that we found in the previous episode where we were exploring to find cactus. So there is our little stripe of badlands, and over here on the shore is a structure that a few of you spotted in the last episode here. This is a desert well. It's not the most exciting structure in a desert, but it does exist. It is there. So let's go and take a look at that. So here it is, the desert well. It's simply a section of sandstone raised up a little bit with these pillars around it and five water source blocks in the center. These can actually be a neat way of finding out that you can get infinite water from a single central water source, but that's basically all they do. They don't really have any kind of function. They don't have any loot chests. They are just here for decoration. I believe they also used to be associated with villages, but that's not really the case anymore since village designs changed as of Minecraft 1.14. So we have a desert well, at least, and that's pretty much all that can be said about that. Luckily for me, over here on this side of the desert, I remembered that we had a bunch of lava over here. So I'm going to turn a bunch of this into obsidian, and then we're going to gather all of this up for nether portals that we can build in the jungle and hopefully in a desert temple. There we go, perfect. <laughs> we have a nether portal set up here in the jungle temple. We might as well go through to the nether and very quickly see where we end up. Oh, <laughs> that's not too bad actually. Crimson Forest Ravine by the looks of things. I was hoping that it wasn't going to be a basalt delta, so I think we turned out all right there. Back over here in the desert, the other place I was considering building a nether portal because some people in the comments suggested it was right here on this ship that seems to have just run aground on a sandbar here and been relatively untouched by the process. It's hardly a shipwreck, it's more of just a, a ship, I guess. <laughs> so let's go and raid this and see if there is room on board for a nether portal because I'm kind of curious to see how much of this has actually been submerged in the sand. And it turns out absolutely nothing. <laughs> this is quite incredible. I've never seen a shipwreck in such good condition. And so we could in theory, although it's a little bit torn up on this side, <laughs> we could in theory turn this into a base of sorts from which to explore further afield around here. I'm at least going to sleep on the deck, even though it's made out of slabs. So my bed is weirdly hovering above the deck here. Let's quickly check the chest at the front here. A couple of suspicious stews. So the chest at the back here is going to have another buried treasure map, but I don't want to pick that up quite yet because a couple of people in in the buried treasure episode did point out that we could even take one of these maps a little bit further away once we've discovered the treasure in this area and potentially it's not going to try and find a new treasure until we open it. I want to test that theory so we might as well do that while we're on the hunt for our desert temple. There's a lot of beach area over here on this savannah so I have a feeling that we're probably over there somewhere by those acacia trees. Yep all the way on the other side over here it looks like and all we need to do is find that magical 9-9 coordinate around here and we should be stumbling upon another treasure. And judging by the hole here, I was a little worried that we'd already dug this up, but it seems like the sand here has somehow... Oh, hello, wait a second. What on earth has happened here? Is this a ruined nether portal that's caused this cave in? Well, it doesn't seem to be. It just seems like some magma blocks have generated here naturally. But does that mean they've destroyed the buried treasure chest? Because I think it should be on this block right here. Oh, unbelievable. That seems to be what's happened because right here, that 99 coordinate, we are right on the X of the treasure map. It looks like that magma block generated there completely covered this because I definitely haven't been out here digging up buried treasure before, that's for certain. Well, now we know that's a dud, I can bury that treasure map there for basically ever. Now let's head back to the shipwreck that might have had a second treasure map for us. And if we take this treasure map out of here, it still says buried treasure map. And that's giving it an ID already when we put it in our inventory, which I think means that it's already chosen a location for that. So unfortunately, there isn't really a way short of maybe putting it in a hopper and transporting it across the ocean or something that it can't choose a location automatically when you take it out of the chest. But we'll find out if that means anything in a second or two. For now, we're going to grab these iron ingots and iron nuggets. We might stash the lapis here in the ender chest as well. We'll cross the ocean over here in search of potentially another desert biome, and hopefully that will have a desert temple for us. Once we're over there, we can also see if we can load up that buried treasure map and search for treasure a little further afield. Now, ocean biomes count among the biomes which are linked by temperature, so there is every chance, there we go, as we cross the ocean, that we end up in some other warm biomes. And it looks like we do have a little ridge 
bunch of desert there. There's at least one or two cacti there before it turns back into a jungle. There is also, I'm going to swing around for this as well, a ruined portal here in the water, which looks like it has three blocks of gold. So I might as well grab all of those while I can. Figured I might as well, since we're on a bit of a structure hunting kick here, and we've got efficiency and protection gold stuff, nothing to really worry about. What I was really hoping for, though, was an area where the desert continued into a larger landmass, because right now these little strips of desert aren't really large enough to spawn their own desert temples. Another shipwreck kind of overturned over there in the water, but not really something I'm looking for right now. Well, that's incredibly cool. Still isn't a desert temple, though. And this, just down the valley from that, is a pretty incredible location for a nether portal. You'll also notice that this mountain, which I believe has a stony peak biome up there, also contains a really large deposit of calcite. So if you're having trouble finding that in geodes down underneath the ground, if you're kind of struggling to find more stuff to build with and you wanted lots more calcite, look for the taller mountain biomes in warmer areas that have the stony peaks instead of frozen peaks and you'll find large deposits of calcite hidden amongst the stone or sometimes just in plain view like that one is. Every warm biome I find in this world seems to be a jungle but there is another jungle temple right here so I figure we might as well raid this one too. We can actually get in here see if the lever mechanism is on this side which it is okay so let's use this combination this time and there we go, that burial chamber on the side here should be open. We've got a little bit more gold from that, that's not too bad actually. I think we've had decent luck so far. It occurs to me that while we're several thousand blocks out, I might as well check this buried treasure map, and yes, it does look like it's leading to the same place. So unfortunately, as soon as we took it out of the chest, that buried treasure map was not really going to be useful anymore. Let's see if tripping these traps down here is going to lead to anything else. That's a little bit more gold. In fact, I think both of those chests might have been the same, thanks to some sort of fluke of Minecraft's loot generation. Hey, not to worry, at least we've raided another jungle temple in this video. And maybe after the next cut, there'll be a desert temple waiting for us. I have never been so happy to see a landmass in this game. <laughs> oh my goodness. I have traveled about 4,000 blocks in the opposite direction from where that jungle temple was. We've gone south all the way and finally I have found a desert larger than a postage stamp and I'm very happy about that fact. I don't know if it's got a jungle temple yet but I wanted to bring you folks back in so you could see what a real desert looks like because finally Finally, we have ourselves something resembling a desert. It might even have a desert village in it. It is large enough at least to sustain some sort of civilization and oh, I'm so glad. We're going to need a lot of sand throughout the series later as well, not just for stuff like glass, which you can actually get by trading with librarians. And I prefer to do that because sand can be used to craft TNT. It can be used to make concrete. We've got a whole bunch of other stuff we can do with sand. So we're going to need a decent stockpile of it from somewhere and while I usually go out quite far to mine out an entire desert for sand later in a world's lifespan I have a feeling that this is one of the closer deserts to my base at 3,000 blocks on both the X and Z axes so hopefully it's got a desert temple so we can at least talk about that today but if not we might have to go and find yet another desert look at this though the landscape is really interesting and we have a little bit of a swamp valley going on in there that's kind of cool the terrain generation has gotten very extreme in places and it looks like that's even affected the village over there you can see that iron golem there's a cat standing over there in the distance there's some hay bales over there and they're all on this weird outcropping there might even be some stuff generating underneath the overhang there so let's go and take a quick look at that because we haven't had a chance to look at a desert village until now honestly i'm just super happy we found this place it's a little bit ugly in spots look at these weird stone outcroppings and stuff like that it's a very very strange world generation that we've ended up with but man am i happy to see at least some structures in a desert that's a little bit larger than my own thumb let's take a look over here we got some hay bales piled up over here that we could snag if we need a little bit of trading material or a few other building blocks or just some bread if we wanted to because I have been traveling for a while I might be running a little low on food. The architecture of this desert village has been torn asunder by the world generation and it looks like we'll have to climb up this hill here before we even get to the village proper and get to see the villagers. Yep underneath the overhang here we have a couple of houses and this guy appears to be stuck in the ceiling so I'm gonna steal his bed for the night because it's getting dark outside. And you'll notice that these villagers have completely different outfits from the ones we've encountered before. These are the 
the desert villagers. Looks like at least one of them is a cartographer. The iron golem is marching around up here. There's a couple of floating sandstone blocks and things like that, but the majority of this village is just confused with where everything is, and I don't think there are that many workstations around for people to work at either. Is that guy a leather worker? I think he's a leather worker. There's so many weird positions for the houses up here, but we've reached the top of the village, at least for the moment, and maybe it could be a fun project to come back to this village in future and level it out a little bit, and if, while we take down all of the sand and sandstone from the surrounding area, turn this into a village that at least looks habitable. But that's not really what we're here for today, so I'm going to take the coordinates just in case and be on my merry way. <laughs> and in case you wanted to look at what a better desert village looks like, there's one on the opposite side of the hill. I feel like these people drew the short straw in terms of where to settle down. But luckily for me, this village looks like it expands out in this direction as well. Let's wander over and see if we can find a desert temple. Oh, no desert temple yet, but something potentially just as good right over there as you see the stretch of red sand and a little bit of naturally generated terracotta indicates that right there on the edge of this hillside, a Badlands biome has started to form. We saw the red sand before, well this is really what it's supposed to look like, although we don't have much more of the Badlands generation around here, so it seems like potentially we could be losing out on what would have been a Mesa otherwise. Yeah, it looks like we don't get much more than that unfortunately. Well, the Badlands continues to be even rarer than the desert, and we've only just found the desert, another desert well here as well. There is even, as if to taunt me, <laughs> a jungle temple right on the edge of where the desert biome turns into a jungle. But directly opposite that, I see the towers and the pyramid of a familiar structure. And over there, we even have a little bit more of the Badlands generation. So this area here is what I've been looking for this entire time. And look at that jungle Badlands combo. Look at the gradient in the leaves. Oh my goodness. Anyway, the desert temple I've been talking about for the longest time is finally over here and wouldn't you know it there's yet another desert village over there which is fantastic placement this is definitely an area where I want to place a nether portal because we will want to come back here for a variety of things a jungle temple right there a badlands right here and a desert temple here well let's dig on in You'll find these desert temples in a variety of places in a desert as long as you find a large enough area. And the first thing we need to do once we step inside is just light up the corners just in case. Because unlike the jungle temple, the desert temple has one very distinct area of loot and it's down here. If we dig down through this, you'll find that we end up in a kind of burial chamber area with four chests surrounding a pressure plate. And that is the reason you do not want to dig through the very central piece of terror cutter there. The pattern on the floor is a little bit of a trap and we know what happens if you dig straight down you could end up falling into something potentially very dangerous. In this case we're going to remove the pressure plate and I'll dig out the floor because underneath here is a whole bunch of TNT and we could have exploded that if we ended up jumping on that pressure plate in the center potentially detonating us losing all of our items and the loot from these four chests. So that is most definitely something you want to avoid. I'm going to throw down my ender chest so that we can throw a bit more stuff in here, including the TNT, and I think I'll throw the obsidian in there for the moment. We'll reclaim that in a second once we're ready to make our nether portal. Now I've given myself a little bit more room. I can throw the rest of the TNT in there as well. Let's rebuild this floor and let's see what's in each of these chests. Well, for a start, we're going to get a few loot items, just your standard junk, your gunpowder, a few bones. We've got a saddle, which ain't bad if you haven't done a lot of fishing. In this next chest, we have a diamond horse armor so the loot is getting a little bit better in that one we've got some iron ingots here and another diamond horse armor so we might as well grab those along with maybe we'll collect the bones up and in this one finally we get something good we have an enchanted book with just projectile protection but much like other enchanted book loot these can be basically any enchantments including treasure enchantments like frost walker and mending. The only one it cannot be is soul speed because I'm pretty sure you can only get that traded to you by piglins. So as far as loot goes this wasn't all that great. I'm going to grab all of the bones and take them with me because it's always nice to have a decent supply of bone meal and we haven't got a fully automated farm for that yet but that's more or less it for this desert temple. We could blow the entire thing up with TNT now if we wanted to but I'm going to settle for just hobbling my way out of here and I think we'll set up another nether portal here just so we can return to this desert temple at any time because it links 
links to the rest of this desert and I will definitely want to come back here for, like I said, the village over there, a couple of other village projects in the area, loads of sand and this. Badlands biomes are the only place in the world you will find red sand, except for maybe occasionally the inventory of a wandering trader, but even then it's kind of random whether or not he turns up with that, which means Badlands biomes are one of your only ways of turning red sand into red sandstone, which is kind of an interesting building block if you want to go with a very orange color palette. Of course, there are some other things around here that we could get hold of if we wanted more building materials, like all of the terracotta around here. The majority of this is just regular terracotta, which you'll find is an earthy, kind of orangey-brown color, but there are striations of different colors of terracotta as well, and terracotta, much like wool, is a material that can be dyed different colors. So you'll find some naturally generating gray and white terracotta over here, although I can't pick all of it up right now because my inventory is looking a little bit full. Further up there, you'll see orange, you'll see brown, you'll even find stripes of red red and yellow in some of the larger Badlands biomes. There are a lot of different Badlands variations that can occur naturally, it's just that right now we don't have a great deal of them around here. <laughs> but don't worry, we'll be back to talk about Badlands biomes another time and hopefully we'll be able to find a few more variations on them because there's some pretty spectacular terrain generation out there. For now I'm going to make good on what I said I was going to do and we're going to set up a nether portal right here and I'm going to make this a 3 by 3 nether portal. Oh, <laughs> always good when you misplace obsidian. So I'll just grab two more obsidian blocks from the ender chest, we'll light this portal and let's see where we end up this time. Okay, okay, nether wastes, looks like relatively high up and immediately found a ghast over there <laughs> hiding under the overhang. All right, well, we'll uh, pop back through, but at least now we know where we are. And I thought it was getting dark outside. Turns out it's just raining in all the biomes where it can actually rain. The desert not being one of those. Well, folks, finally we have found ourselves the desert temple. And you know what? I think we're probably going to wrap up the episode here. I think I'll spend a bit of time, though, linking these nether portals from the jungle temple and the desert temple back to my central area. So we'll at least know that we have a safe path out there. And I'll probably end up doing that on a live stream relatively soon. So keep your eyes peeled for that. And in the meantime, thank you so much for watching this episode of the Minecraft Survival Guide. My name has been Pixorius. Don't forget to leave a like on this video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you want to see more, and I'll see you folks soon. Take care. Bye for now.